The original Plato study analyzed ticagrelor versus clopidogrel and found superiority for ticagrelor in patients undergoing early invasive approach for ACS. Subsequent to that, the study has now given us a variety of substudies. And we're at the American Heart Association meeting 2012, and we're talking about high sensitivity troponin as a biomarker, and this is a Plato substudy. And I'm talking to Dr. Terry Ferguson, Vice President of Global Medical Affairs for AstraZeneca. And thank you very much for joining us. In this particular case, this is a Lars Wallenton. He's the first author. We talked to uh, Dr. Wallenton at ESC, so uh, we're all familiar with him at the moment. Tell me a little bit about this particular substudy to Plato. All right, well, first I need to put it in the context of Plato. Sure. So just to correct you a little bit, <laughs> that is that the Plato study was not just invasively managed patients. The Plato study included medically and invasively managed patients with ACS. Um, in 18,000 patients. This particular substudy now looks at two different things. The first thing it looks at is positive or negative high sensitivity troponins. Not the old troponins, the, right. the new version of the troponins as well too, the more sensitive marker. And it also looked at patients who are revascularized in hospital versus managed medically as well too. So it asks two slightly different questions looking at the overall Plato study. Substudy analyses are always fraught with hazard and challenging. Is the glass half full? Is the glass half empty? What we found is very convincing evidence that in patients with positive high sensitivity troponins, which was 87% of the Plato population, there was substantial benefit of ticagrelor over clopidogrel in patients who were revascularized and were medically managed. So that the 87% of the Plato population who were high sensitivity troponin, substantial benefit of ticagrelor. So it's important to know that number? The, the troponins, the, the level of troponin. Well, uh, troponin, the absolute number, it's troponin is not like LDL. Right. Okay. Troponin is used as a screening test to identify high-risk individuals. And the plain old troponins that we've been using now is not a very sensitive test. And what the high sensitivity versions do is they have a lower threshold for identifying myocardial damage if it's taken place. Troponin is what distinguishes non-STEMI from unstable angina. So unstable angina does not have evidence of injury. Non-STEMI does have evidence of injury. Where the high sensitivity troponins have taken it differently is a more sensitive marker of this and probably a much better risk stratifier. So that troponins are embedded in the treatment algorithms, decision making around who needs to go for invasive therapy. How rapidly do they need to go for invasive therapy? And now we have some guidance as to pick people who may derive particular benefit from more aggressive therapy, regardless of whether they're managed invasively or medically. 87 percent, that's a huge number for a, a study like this. Well, again, we have to recognize that Plato itself was an all comers right. study. At, or essentially all comers, medium to high risk ACS patients, managed medically, managed invasively, including people who may have required bypass surgery. So it covered a big population. I think that this is an opportunity and kudos to the investigators for having had the foresight to include high sensitivity troponin measurements at the time of randomization because then we were able to look at high sensitivity, the impact of high sensitivity troponin in almost 10,000 patients. So I think that this has really advanced our level of knowledge about the field. When I talked to Lars Walleton and Michael Ziegowitz over at ESC, they talked about access and availability of ticagrelor as an issue. It's kind of an issue in Europe, and it, it may be an issue in the United States. What can you, how can you address that issue? Well, the, you know, the, the life cycle of a pharmaceutical product has gotten a little bit more complicated in the modern world. So it's not just getting the drug approved that, that 
will define success or failure. It's not just having the drug on protocol. It's whether the insurance companies will pay for this, essentially access for the patients to be able to get the drug. And what we have seen change dramatically in the U.S. just in the last few months, but also has changed worldwide as well too, is that the insurance payers are covering this and the patients have access to the drug. And I think that this has provided a substantial uptick in the usage and people are more comfortable recognizing, yes, their patients can get this drug. And I think that that has provided an opportunity for people now to take the benefits that they saw in the clinical trial and now put them into real world practice. Both doctors, Waldenton and Zikowitz, were a little bit flummoxed as to why some of the newer agents aren't being adopted as quickly as possible? Well, I, I wish I had the answer to that question, but I think that, that change is inevitable. There's always new information, and part of the challenges, particularly in the ACS world, is the ACS world is complicated. There's a lot of things that need to be sorted through, and there are relatively few therapies that lend them that may be useful just in invasively managed patients or just in patients undergoing PCI. And I think that, that one of the challenges around Ticagrelor was that it showed benefit in a broad population of patients, and people have sort of struggled with, well, what does this mean to me? And I think that studies like this high-sensitivity troponin test now have provided us with some guidance of, if you want a a population of people that you are really going to see benefit in, this, this is that population. Well, thank you very much. And if you uh, want to see the Lars Wallenton and Michael Ezekiewicz interview, that was probably maybe a month or so ago uh, online here at uh, Cardiosource World News. I'm Rick McGuire. Thank you.